Merhaba, this is Leyla Topal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will be cooking balık pirinçlemesi, meaning fish baked in the oven together with rice. Uh, a little announcement, at the end of this cooking video, there will be the last episode on St. Peter's Castle, the Museum of Underwater Archaeology. So if you're a history aficionado, make sure you do not miss the end after this cooking video. Let's have a look at the ingredients. So I will be using gray mullet for my uh, dish today. This is flathead gray mullet. It was a huge fish, um, two kilograms, which is like four pounds. And my fishmonger already scaled it for me and then sliced it. So these are like fish steaks, as you see. And I will be using some flour. I will be using some rice, olive oil, little bit of butter, black pepper and salt to season. I will be using some bay leaves and some parsley and some lemon juice. And at the very end, what, when I am ready to serve it, I'm thinking about putting some cherry tomatoes on the side. Uh, by the way, today I am hosting my favorite chef in the entire world, my mom, Naime Topal. <laughs> we will be cooking together. Günaydın, hoş geldiniz. <laughs> yes, my mom and I will be cooking together today. So the first step is to coat the fish with flour. Uh, we already sprinkled some salt on the fish and then my mom is just coating the fish in flour right now. By the way, this is also typically how we deep fry the fish in Turkey. We always dip it into flour. But if you're living in the Black Sea coast of Turkey, then instead of wheat flour, you use corn flour. Uh, let's just check. Anne, önce bir kontrol edelim ısındı mı acaba? Let's see. So she's just sprinkling uh, some flour to see, to make sure the oil is uh, boiling. Özkan, could you zoom a little bit? So here in the pan, we have one cup of olive oil. So generally speaking, when we deep fry fish in Turkey, we love squeezing a lot of lemon on it, and that's how people prefer to eat it. Uh, one thing very interesting, a lot of people think that olive oil is not good for deep frying. That's actually totally wrong. Uh, the uh, smoking point of olive oil is pretty high, higher than canola oil or sunflower oil. Depending on the amount of um, acid in it, it can easily be between 380 to 420 Fahrenheit. Meaning, uh, when the oil reaches the smoking point, some chemical reactions happen and uh, the olive oil has high smoking point and that's exactly why the undesired uh, flavor or smoke does not really happen with olive oil. So it's just perfect for deep frying. And the higher quality olive oil you have, the better the result will be. So don't hesitate to deep fry in olive oil. And it's also very rich in antioxidants and also vitamin E. And um, it is also uh, full of unsaturated fat. And that is the healthy, useful fat for human body. So my mom started uh, flipping the fish over. By the way, when I was a little kid, uh, we had a neighbor and he was a fisherman. So every week he would bring us buckets of fish. So my mom would sometimes grill them, sometimes deep fry or uh, broil them with some tomatoes, onions and um, also cook them with rice like this. So this is like one of my favorite childhood dishes. So uh, we have deep fried our fish steaks for almost six minutes, like three minutes on each side. And then my mom is just removing them into an oven proof dish. 
Anne nasıl gidiyor? Çok güzel. <gülüyor> Vallahi senin elinden olur da güzel olmaz mı? I'm asking her uh, how it is going and she says very good. It smells so good. So the key here of course is uh, the oil is boiling because otherwise your fish will soak all the oil and it will be very soggy. I just feel like, you know, s eating the fish she's putting there, but I have to hold myself. So we finished deep frying our fish and the next step is to pour the rice into that leftover oil. So this oil already has all the flavor of the fish. That's why we will be using that oil. And this was one cup of rice. So depending on the amount of uh, fish you have, you may actually, you know, decide about the exact amount. But I am using one cup of rice for four pounds of fish. Mm. So uh, the important thing here is you wash and rinse the rice at least five t times before you put the rice into the oil. And we will be adding a little bit of butter to it because that really gives a lot of flavor. My mom loves using a lot of butter, so I'm just removing it to the side. So what we are doing basically is sauteing the rice together with um, olive oil, that deep fried olive oil. And um, can I have one of the cup measurements there, please? So this is um, three thirds of a cup. Anneciğim nasıl? Bir tane daha mı? So twice of this. Okay, here we go. Çok güzel kokuyor değil mi? Tabii çok güzel. Mis gibi kokuttu bak. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, Kara what is next? Oh, okay, so we will be adding some salt and black pepper. Balıklara uh, ektim. So I already put some salt on the fish, so this is just for the rice. Aha. Uh -huh. And then uh, let's just put some black pepper. I'll be grinding some black pepper here. Here we go. Yes. Biraz daha koyayım mı yeter mi anne? Just a little bit more she says. She's the boss so I'll do whatever she says. Tamam. Okay, this is good. Biraz altını açayım mı? Çok açma, çok açma. Okay, İyi. yes. So, uh, we will be adding the lemon juice now. So, we saute the rice for about 3-4 minutes and we are putting lemon juice in there now. Here we go. And then we will just stir it with a spoon. So we sauteed the rice in olive oil, butter, and we added some le lemon juice, but our rice is still not cooked. All right. Şimdi ne yapıyoruz anneciğim? Şimdi pirinçleri balıkların okay. üstüne dökeceğiz. Ben mi yapayım? So I will be doing this part. Oh, okay. Just a few more minutes. Okay. She just wants it to boil with lemon juice for a minute or two so that all the flavors combine. Then we will start putting this uh, rice here uh, into the oven dish uh, we have. But the important thing here is you do not put the rice on the fish. The rice needs to be between the fish because otherwise if you put it on the fish, when you put it into the oven, rice will not cook well, it will be too crispy. But you want the rice to be moist. That's why it needs to be among the fish, but not on the top of the fish. So our rice is ready and we will pour it into our pot here. Mmm, looks so good. Oh, and çok güzel oldu. Değil mi anneciğim? Evet. Ellerine sağlık. <laughs> she says it looks so good. It looks so great. Her mouth is getting watery. <laughs> and now she will just boil a little bit of water to add um, into this uh, oven dish here. Oops. Bir dakika. Oops. <laughs> 
Oh. Yes. Ooh, yes. Distribute the rice equally everywhere. That's the idea. And meanwhile, we have preheated our oven at uh, 200 Celsius degrees, and that's roughly 390 Fahrenheit. And when we put it into the oven, we will not cover it, so it will be baked like this without any lids on it. And the amount of water she added here is roughly half a cup. So we cooked our fish and rice in the oven at 200 Celsius degrees, 390 Fahrenheit for about um, 20 minutes. And um, I would like to remove the bay leaves out now. And I already sprinkled some chopped parsley on it. So you can see that they are still very green because I put the uh, parsley right after I took the fish out of the oven. Um, Eskan, could you just zoom a little bit? I just would like to show you how moist the rice is. Look at this. We will be doing the tasting in a minute. My mouth is just getting so watery. So let me just put this into a serving plate and then um, my mom and I will be trying it. So we are finally ready to taste. Anneciğim tadalım mı? Tadalım. Okay, my mom and I will be tasting it together. Yep. Mmm. <laughs> Let me help. Here we go. And I'm gonna get some rice as well. Mmm. Ne dersin? Nasıl olmuş? Çok güzel olmuş. Ellerimize sağlık. <gülüyor> Afiyet olsun. We did a good job. Health to our hands and bon appetit. If you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel. If you would like to continue with St. Peter's Castle, keep watching this video, please. Have a great weekend. Afiyet olsun. Teşekkür ederim. <gülüyor>
that almost look like big fruit bowls today, they found some sculpture. Uh, this is extremely interesting because in most of those shipwrecks, you come across either amphoras carrying wine or you come across broken glass, but finding sculpture in a shipwreck is pretty unique. And it seems like uh, the statues, the sculpture that we see on this shipwreck, most of them were from Cyprus, the largest island in the Eastern Mediterranean. And uh, some of them were from Egypt. And when you look at those statues, you clearly see that they were from archaic period with arms held very close to the body, braided hair, almond-shaped eyes, and an archaic smile on the statues. area we will be looking at a couple of different exhibitions and the exhibition halls are the ground levels of the Italian tower and also the ground level of the French tower. So uh, these were not shipwreck excavations. These are the results of land excavations. The archaeologists excavated some ancient cemeteries on Bodrum Peninsula and together with the skeletons of the deceased, ashes, bones of the deceased, they also found a lot of uh, tomb gifts because ancient people believed in afterlife as well. So the deceased were buried together with his favorite weapons or her favorite jewelry and so on. All those artifacts are displayed in these two different exhibition halls. Now we are in a different exhibition hall. We are at the hall of Karian Princess Ada. In 1989, a family from Bodrum area wanted to build a new house in their garden. As they started digging for the foundations, they came across a marble sarcophagus. And the news, of course, reached to the castle and the archaeologists went there. And when they opened this sarcophagus, they found the skeleton of a woman together with beautiful golden crowns, necklaces, uh, rings, and they definitely knew that this was the tomb of a very important person, but they had no idea who this woman was. So what they did was they took the skull and they sent it to England. With the help of Scotland Yard and Manchester University, they put some flesh on this skull. And then when they kind of looked at the end result and started comparing this with the statues of different personalities from 4th century BCE from this part of the world, uh, they said that most probably this was Karian Princess Ada a sister of King Mausolos and his sister wife Artemisia II. She herself was the ruler of Caria region in the 4th century BCE and she was also known as the adopted mother of Alexander the Great. We are at the end of our tour of St. Peter's Castle. Before we leave, there are two things that I would like to emphasize. Um, I have heard people walking around and then on the way out they were saying, where was this Museum of Underwater Archaeology? I didn't see it. Uh, this is interesting because uh, sometimes people think that they will be visiting a museum under the water. 
Uh, well, that's not really what we're talking about. Museum of Underwater Archaeology means most of the artifacts that are displayed in that museum are from shipwrecks. So um, the other thing um, is right now, as I mentioned earlier, the restoration of the castle has not been fully completed. There were two very important exhibitions, Serçe Harbor shipwreck and the Uluburun shipwreck, the oldest shipwreck ever found in the world was displayed here. So those two exhibitions are not open yet. Uh, I talked to a couple of people, close friends who work here, and I was told that those exhibitions will be ready in December. So hopefully I will be able to bring you back and show you those two wonderful exhibitions of uh, Bodrum Museum of Underwater Archaeology. Thank you very much for watching it, visiting the castle with me, and thanks for subscribing. Mm -hmm.